Welcome. Please tell me um, your name and, and why you're here. Hi, uh, my name is Fu Chi Su. I'm a chairman of uh, OP Innovations Incorporated, a company based in Taiwan. I come here to uh, attend the Quantify Self conferences in Europe. And why? Oh, because I said the uh, I myself is very much interested in learning about myself, and of course I said the uh, our company also building uh, some tools that make it easy for other people to uh, to learn about themselves. Yeah. So this is a great community because all the participants are basically have the same goal. So so it's a nice place to find those people that have a common interest and maybe a lot of people can be, uh, take advantage if find interesting and what our tools can help them mm -hmm. achieve their goals. Yeah, and, and I see you, you are wearing yes. uh, some of the, of the uh, things. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you measure at the moment? Okay, and the, uh, actually right now I'm currently wearing the uh, three sensors, yeah. one on my forehead and uh, okay, I guess this is okay, one yeah. on my <laughs> center of the chest and on uh, my wrist and just uh, demonstrate and the uh, the sensor itself is a general purpose so if I wearing in the in the forehead is measure my brain wave or the EEG activity if I measure putting in the center of my forehead it's mostly a frontal lobe activity so my decision making if I can also wear it on a little bit on the side so you will capture the, uh, the the side brain activity I can wear behind the ear. Mm -hmm. So that's mostly the uh, the visual audio center activities. And if it, the same sensor, because it just measure electrical signal, if you wear near my heart, so it's basically measure the heart, the uh, the signal, the rhythm. And, and the one on your wrist? On the wrist is that all the other places uh, you can measure the uh, the muscle activity. Now the sensor itself, in addition to the the, uh, the 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 signal amplifier also have a uh, accelerometer building and the uh, the thermometer building, so you also capture the activity, the posture, and uh, all those information. So, so 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 what does all this tell you? Uh, well, the a great deal about how much I don't know about myself. Okay. <laughs> okay. So so you learned a lot about yourself by wearing yes, this. Yes. And what have you learned? Well, uh, I think, for example, the uh, part of the uh, the the part of the project, we as mentioned that uh, it was it started as a personal hobby, and uh, because I was trying to understand myself, so I so kind of we purchased all the sensor available on the uh, the commercially and uh, try them, and they found out that they don't really tell the the whole picture, uh -huh. and uh, some of the reason is that the uh, most of the, uh, the 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 product are targeted to tell consumer an answer. A ready-made answer. The score for this, and the score answer for is, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you eat too and much, or you, you right. right. You I think that's very, very helpful for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. But the for people really want to understand oneself deeply, and that's just not enough because it's like we, we don't want to be told the conclusion. We want to see that what data that drives that conclusion, and what nuances or different levels there are. So, so that's really the uh, one of the key things. So. The uh, the uh, most of the, uh, the 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 sensor, and they, they try to give you the answer. So they either don't give you the data access for the raw data, uh -huh. or they heavily filter or remove a lot of portion of the data which they think they're not important. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you want to make the decision sorry. yourself whether That's right. it's important. We or want to not, not, not yeah. necessarily make the decision. It's nice to know their decision, uh -huh. but we also like to independently validate or verify. And whether that decision is true or how true it is, yeah. and uh, so you you wear this during the day, during night as well. Uh, yeah, if you measure my uh, sleep, yeah. oftentimes yes. Yeah. So and then it, it it gives you all those data, and you you uh, well probably see them back at a computer or something. Yes. Yeah. And 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 so what do you do with it then? Okay. Um, as I mentioned, that the uh, there's uh, multiple ways uh, you can look at the data. And the, uh, we're actually we're still the uh, learning new way of looking at the data, but it was quite fascinating. And for example, just on a very very simple level, just a simple accelerometer, right? And people are more familiar with the accelerometer you wear on your wrist, you wear it on your waist, mm -hmm. and uh, that tell you how much your body move, right? But one of the things is that they, they don't tell you is what is your posture because the hand does not have a posture, uh -huh. and the yeah. waist does not have a posture. The posture is about the trunk. Yeah. So if I wear it in the middle of my chest, or if I wear it on my forehead, 
Then actually there's uh, extra information. The, the, the same sensor is already there in every device, but depending on where you wear it, and the information it can tell you actually becomes uh, different, actually richer. So in this case, it's that we all know that uh, nowadays with a smartphone, tablet, everybody spends a great deal of time, so kind of lowering their head, which is a very bad posture. And we all know that, but there's no easy way to track or recognize how much time. I'm lowering my head. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then is, is that too much already? Maybe I should change my posture a little bit. Here's an example. But why do you need data for that? Because uh, I feel pain in my neck if I, if, I, if I bend my head too much. But you see, that's when the worst already happened. And to, by monitoring, the goal is, is that you can correct it before it turns into the pain. Uh -huh. okay. And uh, so, so this is uh, one of the things is that when you measure a lot of data, and uh, the one that goal is that you understand ourselves, we understand ourselves better, and hopefully we can make some corrective actions or make some changes to lifestyle, changing habits uh -huh. before a serious condition. So kind of Occurs, sad thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, and, and, and the brain waves, what, what do you do with them? Okay, the brain wave is actually very, very interesting. And uh, I would say the, uh, our brain, human, actually is the most complex things in this universe. Yeah. And I don't think we, we know enough. Yeah. And the, uh, the, the, the brain wave actually tells us a great deal. And the, some of the simple things, like, for example, how well do I sleep? And earlier I mentioned the posture tells us the information because if you wear it on your forehead and uh, when you sleep at night, how often time, how often you, you change your posture and how fuzzy you are, you, if you replay and the, the posture overnight, you actually get a very good sense of what's happening. And then it's the electrical signal itself. And the brain has many, many different modes and then it goes into. And the brain so kind of is autonomous machine when during the day, it so kind of work with us, the uh, the uh, the consciously, and when we go to sleep, it so kind of work on its own. So, for example, on the sleep tracking, and the, the sleep, the, the brain has many different phases, uh, activities. It's run by itself, and that's a fascinating thing to know. And uh, for someone who suspect they have a sleeping problem, it can be very helpful. Mm -hmm. and actually, what I find out for myself, a yeah. sleep problem a lot of time is a perception problem. And because you don't remember when you're sleeping, you only remember where you're waking, okay? And the, uh, so having a data, so actually a objective data, is actually very helpful. And then what I turn out, what I learned is that, generally speaking, I don't have a sleep problem. Actually, I sleep pretty well. Yeah. And uh, I, I always think that uh, it takes me a very long time to fall asleep, and the data show me, usually I fall asleep within five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm just not patient enough, and then we treat that uh, five and you minutes. Think, oh, I lay awake right, right, for right. hours. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then what the data actually show is, is that I fall asleep within five minutes, and then about an hour later, I wake up briefly, uh -huh. and I remember that. Yeah. So my my memory is just that I was awake, yeah, it and then I was the two, awake, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so therefore I didn't sleep well. Yeah. When in reality is that I wake up a, a, a little bit, and then I sleep. And then I wake a little bit, and then I sleep. So, so, so anyway, so, so having so those what information. Ha, what is, yeah, what has it learned you? I, I think that's a funny emotional point of view, and that's very supportive. Okay, because I, I'm, I'm, because you see, the human is subject to the mental suggestions, or actually self-suggestions. If I believe I don't sleep well, chances are I sleep worse and worse. Uh -huh. Okay, having some objective data, you now if I do have a sleep problem, Actually, I can see that, and I can see that the degree of the problem is not as bad as I have imagined. Okay, and then once so I have that confidence, so my yeah. yes, yeah. my mind is relaxed. I know that I have no problem with sleep. Okay, so then this is one less worry I have. So <laughs> so I remove unnecessary all this fabricated stress or fabricated worry in my life. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I heard you also use the, 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 the uh, center for um, uh, when you're uh, into uh, um, meditation. meditation. Yes, yeah. yes. So and how does uh, that work? I think it worked great, yeah, because it's that, uh, I mean, I know that the, the, a lot of people when they do meditation, one of the major frustration is that they don't know how well they do because when you meditate, the, 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 the objective is to, to empty your, your brain of any thoughts or worry yes, or yeah. you're, you're you supposed to be, to be totally relaxed and the relaxed actually has a multiple level meaning 
all your muscle has to be relaxed. And uh, the, even the, the, the brainwave things, we have high enough bandwidth, we can measure whether your muscles are relaxed or not. Once your, all your muscles are relaxed, then the question is, are your brain relaxed? <laughs> and that's indicated by how much brain activity you have. If you really relax, you're not thinking much, then the activity dies down, you go to the background rhythm. And it's a background rhythm. And so, so it's very easy to monitor. And now, of course, it's that for, for many people, and the, the difficulty initially is that they can't get into that state, and they, they also worry a lot. Say, I can't meditate, I, I'm fidgeting all the time. Or, or, and they would meditate, during meditate, then they realize that I was sleeping. So am I meditating or am I sleeping? <laughs> and how can I tell? Because yeah. remember, in the earlier sleep example, you can't remember when you're in sleep. You only remember when you're awake. Uh -huh. so, so your mental picture or the memory give you a very different picture about what actually happened. And so, so having the same thing, measure the, the posture, and the, the brain wave, it gives us a lot of information. For example, if, if I do meditation after lunch, that's the most difficult time, right? Yeah. And because your body needs rest, yeah. okay? So you will need rest. When you meditate, you relax, your body naturally going to rest state. That's very normal, that's very natural. And then you start dozing off because you lose muscle tone. And the, and the data capture every single dosing of your head. I have a friend told me that, yeah, I dose it one or twice, at most. And I say, oh, the data show that you dose exactly 27 times <laughs> within that short 20 minutes, okay? So that's one way people can gauge how they do it. And the people, if you measure that, you can see, oh, early in the morning, I don't dose off. Or late in the evening, I don't doze off. I only doze out during the after the lunch hour. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, for me personally, what I find out is that I always dozing off for exactly 20 minutes, and that's what my body knows that you got enough rest. And then I come back fully awake, fully conscious. If it happens to do meditation longer than that, of course. And uh, so, so also that's become very comforting to know. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I have a quote unquote sleep problem during meditation, and that itself is self-regulated. Okay. And uh, I imagine that for, for, for most people, some of my friends who test out, it's very similar. It, it, basically, you follow the flow. When your body needs rest, when you get, get to the relaxed state, yeah. you will yeah. get rest. Yeah. Okay? There's nothing you wrong. Do, no, okay? no, no. And, but a lot of people worry about it because they think that, oh, maybe I'm doing my meditation wrong. Yeah, I'm maybe just I'm sleeping. Trying, <laughs> maybe I'm, I need to change a different posture. I need yeah. to chant my mantras. And anyway, again, a lot of mental projection, mental picture actually create more stress, and which is the, what the meditation was supposed to, to to help you relax it. Okay? Yeah. So, so having some objective data can help one see oneself in mm -hmm. a, a little bit more objective, yeah. no coloring, right? Yeah. And uh, not based on memory, because it's a total memory, and whatever it sees, it reports to you. Yeah. Is it, is it, do you think it's something uh, a lot of people uh, would like? They would like to see them ob themselves objectively? Uh, well, I would say that the, uh, it's mostly availability of tool and the ease of having access to it. And uh, I would say a lot of people today probably not aware of why they need to understand themselves, mm -hmm. uh, why they need to monitor what good that is. And uh, certainly we see that uh, there's a lot of interesting, exciting talk at the Quantisize itself. A lot of people do exploration, and then once they find some good approach and good data point, they share with everyone else. And uh, I strongly believe that with this kind of learning, experimenting, and then sharing the results with everyone, and uh, more and more people, and uh, we find that uh, maybe they can help them in, in their life in some one way or the other. Yeah. Has it, ha do you feel a, a better, healthier person because of it? Well, probably not because of it, and, uh, but, the, uh, but, but certainly the, the help me to so kind of more objectively and the uh, understanding myself a little bit better. But as you mentioned earlier, is that there's so much we don't know. And there's a lot of data, there's some simple metrics you can use to determine what sleep stage you are in. And but at the even deeper level, and that's why we, we, we're hoping the tool we we help provide because that's the, the smallest so sensor is very easy to really wear. Light it's weight. very light, so yeah. less than three grams. And the, uh, actually, this also the industry is the first totally open source. All the data is fully available to the user. We're going to be posting our source code of the program and for everyone to, to tinker with and build a better algorithm, better application. 
This is really an enabling hardware and uh, something very light, very, very low cost, very easy to use. And it's also the, uh, the, the basic, the first one that the, uh, to allow multiple sensor to be time aligned mm -hmm. so that uh, the, you can measure different aspects or your physical state or mind state, and then try to look at them, making sense out of it. What are the re reactions you get when you walk with these sensors out on the street? What do people say? Well, the the the, uh, the, the in the last two days, the try at the Quantify itself the conference. Yeah, here of course they're very three, enthusiastic. Right. <laughs> people generally are already uh, curious about it. So, <laughs> so I got stopped and asked asked about why it is and what does he do. Uh, but do you wear the them at home in, in, in Taiwan as well? Ah uh, yes, yes. I, I was uh, very well known for being an alien. <laughs> an alien. <laughs> 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 there was a TV show there. It's an alien wearing the antenna on the head. Yeah. So so even though this don't quite look at the antenna, but definitely wearing something. <laughs> <laughs> so you became quite famous because oh, of that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't mind being called an alien. Uh, I, I think that's okay. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah.